Brit Show's deck. Get excited! <laughs> is a self-confessed bibliophile who collects dead bugs with a keen sense of deja vu. <laughs> Brit Showstack is a self-confessed bibliophile who collects dead bugs with a keen sense of deja vu. <laughs> Brit was a member of the 2009 and 2010 Mesa National Poetry Slam team as well as the 2009 Mesa representative at the Individual World Poetry Slam. We don't get out much, but these big things do happen. <laughs> That's beautiful. She's a dandelion seed looking for a place to plant herself. Come oh, on! Okay. So, please give a big round of applause for Britt. Bring her up here now! Sup, PG. So we are off to a good start. Um, tonight's special, a lot of these poems are poems that mean a lot to me and I'm finding new ways um, for them to keep meaning a lot to me and one of the ways that I like to do that is musical accompaniment. And I'm really distracted and busy all the time so I'm going to have my friend help me. So for the first poem, I need my kalimba. Somebody knows what Klimba is, or you're just clapping because you're excited and I'm okay. This is also a, a request. Instructions for making love to your best friend. First time, your lips press. Nervous teenagers at a high school dance know that there is no turning back. And they're promising each other that this is nothing more than two sexually repressed, extremely good looking people sharing that <laughs> time. It's a hot air balloon size lie. And dressing each other simply tying a well-fastened bow against the present you are both hiding under your wrapping paper clothes. Do not smile like Christmas. Check for the price tag tucked behind one another's knees. This night will cost you. Put away your sultry moves. You both know each other's games when they bite your lip and you dig talent marks in their back. These are only X's and O's across a playing field that will always End in a draw. Do not look each other in the eye. Keep pillow talk to directions and speed limits. Left, right, slower, faster. Let your bodies become machines. Forget the cling, stick, peel of flesh. When you climax, do it as quietly as you plan on leaving the crime scene. <laughs> Guttling. Strictly not allowed. If you must spend the night together, do it as divorcees in training, your side, their side, in the morning when you wake tangled in each other, chuckle and blame it on the loneliness you're both trying so desperately to fill. When they tell you over your coffee date, after the long, awkward weeks of not speaking about the girl, the one at the bar, with the phone number and the laugh that reminds them of you. Smile. Put on your supportive voice and struggle through. I'm happy for you. There are some things that friends are never meant to share. Friendship seems to be a line drawn best above the belt. also made that mistake with them, someone they care about. I guess I'm cool with being the only one making that one, because that shit sucks. Uh, and if I'm not the only one, we can all cry later together. Um, this is a poem I wrote. I just moved to Portland in March, so I'm not, I'm pretty new to the Northwest, so this whole like... 
sun, rain, sun, rain thing is a little strange still. It was a Thursday, unlike any other Thursday in a small town tucked under the arm of a giant forest where the people spoke in constant puddles and spent long, steam-choked nights trying to dry the sponges they had become when the sun peeked its way over the hills, made sure the coast was clear, and jumped across the sky. The townspeople all looked up, craned their necks in the most uncomfortable of positions. They began wearing very practical eye protection and bumping into things. <laughs> the sundresses in the storefront's windows knew the first ray of summer battle call well. The dresses flew through the store doors, the townspeople so distracted they barely noticed the chiffon and silk and soft cotton float past. The sundresses danced in the river near the wind at the waterfront park where people went to lay on their backs, continuing to look skyward. Once the sundresses grew tired, they found the backs of women that looked nice to rest upon, each dress different, but called their new flush-cheeked mannequins beautiful. And the women of the town smiled, let the sun rest on their bare shoulders, sat with their legs just so, let their skin whisper their secrets to the dresses, finally felt so free. The men all began to notice the way the dresses moved from one end of town to the next, carried on the backs of their mothers, their sisters, their grocery store clerks, the pretty girl that rides the same bus they do, carried on the backs of the women they'd once let rough, love their rough hearts. The men stopped looking at the sun and began sneaking careful glancing compliments at the women. The townspeople's eyes met square in the middle of curious and excited, and the sundresses danced the women to the men. When their hands touched, small sparks like biting lifesavers in the dark set the city on Fourth of July gunpowder fire, everyone laughing. Lips flirting with lips, the townspeople began to forget all about the sun as it shone high and lonely above their happy heads. They started call it falling in what our feelings most often call love leaving the sun inching back toward the hills that season. The townspeople gave so much to each other that when the sun felt like it wasn't needed, it just disappeared. And the rain clouds rolled back from behind the trees. The sundresses melted into flower beds and oil spots beneath parked cars. The townspeople unlocked their fingers, sunk their eyes back to the ground, shuffled back into their homes, back into their insecurities, back into the season where smiling felt more like sin than satisfaction. There was a woman moved to town the day before the sun gave them the silent treatment. She's sitting down near the river in a puddle of orange and red poppy print, naked, staring at the sky, begging the sun to come out and play again. Mm -hmm. <laughs>